Hey, it's Eric with Jazz Wealth Managers. Got a new microphone working on here. So let me know in the comments about that microphone. Hopefully that it's working well. Uh, we're definitely testing out some new fancy equipment. Today I wanna talk about how to plan for retirement. Now, it sounds pretty cut and dry. I mean, there's tons of calculators that are out there, but what you've gotta really figure out is making sure that you're taking everything into consideration because I've seen so many people that like Excel spreadsheets and all these different things and they're starting to track stuff, but they're not taking everything into consideration. So I wanna show you in our nest egg planning software, what we can look at, how we can really track retirement and look at what you need to be putting in to make sure that you are going to be on track for retirement. So let's go ahead and we'll jump right in and I will go through this with you. So if we're looking here, I created Mr. and Mrs. Jazz. So with Mr. and Mrs. Jazz, you know, you've got your general specifics. You wanna figure out what their age is, but also right here, what we really gotta look at is planning horizon. This is something that a lot of people aren't thinking about and it's an unfortunate thing, but it's the inevitable. We will all die one day. And so we have to figure out the planning horizon. When is the end of the plan? So if you're gonna live to be 90 or whatever the case is, oftentimes a big question to ask yourself or to ask about with your family is longevity. Because is longevity in your family or not? You know, did your parents pass away early? Are they still living? Do you have grandparents that are maybe 95, 100 years old? And another question to ask with that is, are they in good health? Because, you know, I had a great grandfather who lived to be 98 years old and he was in excellent health almost the entire time. They never went into a nursing home, anything like that. Other people, they may have to go into a nursing home, assisted living, all of these different things. And when that happens, that's extra costs that we're going to have to incorporate. So all that to say, make sure that you know what your planning, hori planning horizon is there as far as when the end of the plan will be. So then from there, we always wanna look at income. You know, what is exactly your income? What is your salary? And make sure that you're taking into account also what your wife or your spouse or whoever that may be's income, such as this right here, Mrs. Jazz. So we wanna make sure that we have that. Something that you wanna look at with that, that we look at, is the annual increase. Sometimes you may have an annual increase. Oftentimes a company is gonna give you a 3% boost or a 3% cost of living adjustment each year, known as a COLA. So make sure you're taking that into consideration. Social Security, this is a big one. When it comes to Social Security, it's good to know what you're going to do, and, but at the same time, you may not have a clue how much you're going to get in Social Security. A great thing to do, especially if you're older and you've been working quite some time and you're getting close to retirement, is to go to ssa.gov. You're able to go there and get a good snapshot of what the estimates would be for your Social Security. So once you get your Social Security figured out, make sure you have that taken into consideration. Then we wanna look at what you're actually contributing to your 401k or any other plans when it comes to employer plans or also just brokerage accounts. So make sure you know what first you're putting away, but then also you wanna also take into consideration how much the company is matching for you. That's always a big one because that's going to help boost your probability of success when it comes to retirement. We wanna make sure that we're taking all different numbers and calculating for those. Make sure that you're figuring out, as I said, you know, brokerage accounts, Roth IRAs, anything there. Now, when it comes to net worth, what you're gonna to wanna to think of is a bit of everything. A lot of people just run the basic numbers, but you really start, have to figure out, you know, okay, I have a house over here. The house is gonna be paid off when I'm 65 years old. And so that's a less, that much less of an expense. You can sometimes adjust for other things or maybe take that extra money that you were paying towards the house and that could be used for vacationing. So think about that when you're running your numbers and when you're looking at everything. One of the biggest ones that you really have to figure on and that is your expenses. Uh, when it comes to expenses in retirement, that is going to be the one that really drives everything. If you have $100,000 saved for retirement, you plan to retire next year, I don't think that your expenses are gonna be able, that high. You can have that high of expenses. Now, if you have $10 million or even $2 million saved for retirement, it might be in a bit different of a bracket there. But if you calculate in you know, what you can earn and pull from as far as your nest egg, and then also Social Security, that's what you're gonna be able to figure there. And then when it comes to goals, uh, you have your retirement expense, which we had just talked about, uh, when you're actually going to retire. But one you've got to really think about is healthcare because healthcare is one that everybody really freaks out about. Everybody that I talk to, especially if they wanna retire before Medicare age, they all get concerned when it comes to healthcare. 
This is one we've got to think about, check into. I always encourage people to call, talk with people because sometimes people want to go and they say, well, you know what, I can get Cobra for the next 18 months when I leave my job. Well, that Cobra may cost a lot more than actually going into the marketplace and getting healthcare right this second. So it's something worth checking in with a local healthcare provider and uh, health insurance and seeing if there's another option for you if you go to retire because sometimes uh, it's not as expensive as you might think. Other times it could be. It's all going to depend on your income and that's gonna be one of the big ones or how much you're pulling from in retirement because that's a lot of what the marketplace is basing your healthcare uh, costs on. Also, you want to think, we had talked about longevity. We had talked about, you know, when it comes to other expenses, other things going on, such as nursing home care. The, right this second, you know, this, our nest egg software is actually calculating in uh, in-home care national average. That's $59,488 a year. So can just show you, now let's check this out right here, nursing home national average. So if we did that, for Mr. Jazz, $108,405. That's a plan tanker right there. Um, when it comes to long-term care insurance, I could get on a big soapbox because I had to give you a little background with me. I actually used to work uh, with a company that sold investments, which I, I it was, wasn't a fiduciary. That's why I walked away from the opportunity that I had there. And uh, they sold the investment side of it. They also sold the insurance side of it. And when it came to things, Long-term care was not something that I was a big fan of um, because it's kind of like car insurance. You use it uh, or you lose it when it comes to if you get in an accident, yes, it's there. If you go in a nursing home, yes, it's there, but it could go away. Um, there's a lot that also comes into play. It's never a fixed rate when it comes to long-term care insurance generally. So um, I always say, you know, I'll, I'll put in my, my thing, speak with an insurance professional on this, but don't get sold on it as well. Um, also, when it comes to long-term care insurance, just giving you a little tidbit on that, what we're looking at here is um, if you don't have a significant amount of assets, then eventually what ends up happening is Medicaid would step in and take care of you if you had long-term care needs. But these are all different things that you're needing to look at when it comes to your retirement planning. So make sure that you're taking that all into account. And then from there, then you can run the numbers. Be sure with our plan, what we calculate in with nest egg is inflation. We generally look at, you know, let's just say a 3% average on inflation. The United States government likes to look at uh, keeping at it at 2%, but recently we know that that is much higher. So make sure you're taking inflation into consideration when you're building out your retirement plan. If you would, please be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know how this video went. If you have any questions, you can always leave one and maybe I'll make a video on what you're talking about. Thanks for watching.